Number 35. A wire is drawn through a die, stretching it to four times its original length. By what factor does its resistance increase? All right. So you got to be very careful with the wording on this problem. It says that a wire is drawn through a die, stretching it to four times its original length. If you look at this problem and you just think about, well, what happens to the resistance as the length of the wire changes? And, you know, let's just say we, we had a particular copper wire that was this long. And now we're just going to, instead of having a piece of this length, we now cut a piece that is this long. Let's say we didn't stretch it. Sorry, my hand hit something, obviously. Right. So R is going to be equal to, right, the resistivity times the length divided by then the cross-sectional area. And this is 4L then. So uh, if L just goes up by 4, right, then this goes up by 4, and the resistance would increase by 4 times. However, um, uh, upon careful reading of the problem, that's not exactly what it's saying. It's saying that the wire is being stretched, right? So let's erase all this. So if the wire is being stretched, that means that if this was the original wire, let's say, and or the initial wire, and it had a length of L, as that wire is stretched, well, its length should definitely increase. It said it's going to uh, stretch by four times its original length. So we know that that length is 4L. But we also know then that the cross-sectional area, right, the cross-sectional area right in here, right, the cross-sectional area here will be different from the original cross-sectional area, right? They're not the same. So I can't just simply now plug in 4 into that resistance equation because here's the reason. Remember, resistance is equal to resistivity multiplied by the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area. I have two things that are now changing. It's not that straightforward. So we have to investigate, right? So what you now have to think about is you now have to think about, well, okay, how am I going to relate this wire, the initial wire, somehow to the final wire? There's something about the nature of those two wires that remained constant in going from the initial state and then stretching it into its final state. Do you know what that is? And you also have to consider, we're talking about lengths. We're trying to find out cross-sectional areas. So you got to keep those factors in mind. And what factor remained constant? Maybe we can start substituting. What was that? Volume? You got it. Right? The volume. The volume of the two wires stayed the same. Right? I didn't add any more material in the final state compared to the initial, and therefore the volume of it had to have been the same. So what I can now write is I'm going to write something like this. I'm going to write that the initial volume of that wire is equal to the final volume of the wire. Now, what's the formula for volume based upon the picture uh, and based upon your knowledge of what a wire looks like? Is it a square wire? Well, it could be, <laughs> but uh, I've never seen one. So uh, we're going to assume it's a, a cylindrical wire. And therefore, the formula for volume is going to be pi r squared h, right? That's the formula that we've been dealing with now for quite a while. And I'm just going to be a little more specific about what this radius represents and what this height represents. All right, they represent the initial state. So I'm going to write little sub i's there, little cute little i's. And then the final volume will be represented as pi rf squared, the final radius, multiplied then by the final height. Okay, I'll add a little dot in there too. Okay, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask any questions so far, but then I realized I won't be able to hear you. So, I'll assume you have no questions. Let's move forward. So now we have to try to figure out. Well, okay, great. Uh, you know, Andrew, I have cross-sectional areas here. I got to relate. And I have lengths, I gotta relate. Uh, neither of which uh, looks like they're in this formula yet. Well, that's correct, but they're, they're there. They are there. You just gotta think about it a little bit. You know, the height here, the height of the wire is synonymous with the length, right? Height just means vertical length, basically. And I drew these horizontally. Okay, no biggie, right? Just flip the problem 90 degrees, rotate it 90 degrees, and there you go, there's the heights now, right? Doesn't matter. So essentially now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this L sub i, okay, for the initial height. And then I know that the um, final height there is the same thing as L sub f, or the final length. Now, 
where is the cross-sectional area? You might say, well, I know area, you know, okay, I've got a radius in there, and here's a radius, so maybe they're related. Well, watch this. What's the area, cross-sectional area here, of the wire? Remember, the shape of it is a circle, right? So what's the area of a circle? The area of a circle is pi r squared, right? Wait a minute. Pi r squared? Wait, this is pi r squared, and that's pi r squared. Wait a minute. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that this term right here is simply the cross-sectional area of the wire? And what we do when we find the volume of a wire is we simply take that cross-sectional area of the wire and multiply it by the length? Yes, that's exactly what it is. So same thing goes here, right? Same thing goes for that. So this is just the final cross-sectional area. Okay, this whole term right here. So now, oh my goodness, right? There it is. This is the formula now that relates those four variables, okay? So the initial area, the initial cross-sectional area, I don't know, right? I just label it A sub i, no big deal. The initial length, I don't know, I label it L sub i, no big deal. The final area, I don't know also, so I label it that. And the final length, we know, we called it, remember, 4L, okay? 4L. So maybe what I'll do here is I should really start dropping this subscript. All right, because otherwise, if we don't, we might not see that they're the same. So let me just explain it, right? This this L here represented the uh, initial length, and this 4L here represented the final length. So all I have to do is just substitute L in for LI, and then 4L for LF. All right, now what happens mathematically is the Ls go bye-bye. And now we're left with this. A sub I is equal to A sub F, times four, or in other words, just moving these around a little bit, make it look a little nicer. Not that it really matters. But we realize that the initial area, it's telling us, is four times larger than the final cross-sectional area. And doesn't that kind of look like it makes sense based on the picture? Right, this final is a lot smaller than the initial. So I think we're on the right track. All right, and we're not quite done yet because, you know, this is physics and it can never be a, you know, three minute problem. Um, so it says, by what factor does the resistance now increase? So you're basically now comparing, all right, the final resistance in the wire to the initial resistance. And since we're talking about factors, and we've done this now, I don't even know how many times, right? But we've now seen that whenever we talk about factors, I'm just going to erase this, we wind up using that formula again. Whenever we talk about factors, we always like to talk about, you know, uh, maybe the final state of some object divided by the initial state of that object. In other words, if I want to find the factor by which the resistance increases, I'm going to find the final resistance value and divide it by the initial resistance value. Or if the final value were 100 and the initial value were, let's say, 50, how much did the resistance increase by? Or how much did, what, by what factor did it increase by? Well, 100 divided by 50 is 2, so it increased by a factor of 2. That's the whole idea. Now, obviously, we don't know these values, but we know formulas that relate to them. Remember, we just did this. That resistance, the final resistance, therefore, is going to be equal to the uh, resistivity multiplied then by the uh, uh, final, excuse me, length, divided then by the uh, final cross-sectional area. And I'll move that up a little bit. Now, we're going to get fractions inside fractions. I feel like I'm in inception right now. Um, but, you know, we're going to try to simplify this a little bit. So this is then the initial divided by the initial uh, cross-sectional area, all right? Now, whenever you have a complex fraction, um, why don't we first just, uh, you know, multiply then the top fraction by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction? So in other words, we can simply now take this, that RF over RI will be equal to, rewrite this fraction on top, just like you see it, and then multiply it by the reciprocal of that denominator. So literally just... Do a little flipsy. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, that I this looks a lot nicer, now I'm going to start substituting in things that I know. So, and start canceling things if I can. So I know the rows go bye-bye, right? See you later. LF, what did we say that that was? LF we said was 4L, right? The final length was 4L. What was the final then... Um, cross-sectional area. 
So what you can do here now is we can simply now, if you wanted to, we could solve you know this equation for a sub f, meaning the final cross-sectional area. But we we just leave it alone. Actually, just leave it alone. Don't don't worry about that. Just leave it as a sub f. You'll see what's going to happen. And then multiply that by now the original cross-sectional area. Now remember, you can leave it a sub i, but we have a formula here that relates the two. In other words, remember we, we mentioned that the original cross-sectional area is four times larger than the final. So what I'm going to do here is instead of plugging in the initial cross-sectional area, I'm going to write four times a sub f, meaning four times the final cross-sectional area. And then that will then be divided by this initial length, and the initial length was just L. Now what happens? Bada bing, bada boom, and bada bing, bada boom. And then we have bada bing, bada boom, and we're going to multiply these to get bada bing, bada boom. So the answer is 16. 16 over 1, or it increases by factor 16. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We really appreciate it so much. And uh, we thank you very much for watching, and we will see you soon. Take care.